Hi everybody, so today I'm going to be talking about the general senses, okay? And basically, senses can fall into two different categories. You can have the general senses, which we'll talk about right now, and the special senses. So let's go ahead and get started. And what are the general senses? Well, the general senses are going to be basically things that you feel. So they can be pain, they can be temperature, they can be touch, they can be pressure, which if you think about it, basically all touch is pressure. They could be vibration, uh, proprioception. Proprioception is basically my body's awareness in space. And so basically, if you think of it this way on proprioception is if you close your eyes and think about where your left hand is right now, you know where it's at. And that's proprioception. So your body's awareness in space, right? Now your body does this subconsciously all the time so you don't fall over and things such as that. Okay, so we got proprioception. We also have, let me see, vibration, proper, stretch. Okay, and basically anything else that we can, we can technically feel is going to be a general sense. So now our special senses are going to be things, usually these are, these are associated with an organ, such as um, smell. Right, you smell with your nose, taste, you taste with your tongue, uh, hearing, right, you're gonna hear with your ears, your middle ear, you have organs in there that are going to help you be responsible for balance, which balance kind of goes along with proprioception because when my body needs to know its awareness in space so I can have balance, right, so I can maintain balance. Um, some books will just say equilibrium and also sight, right, we see with our eyes, right, so, that's the general senses, and that is the special senses. Special senses, I'm going to be going over in another video. And so for right now, let's get started on the special senses. So now, we're going to be talking about the different types of receptors that are in the body here, okay? And for the most part, um, before we do, I want to go into different types of touch. Okay, so in, when it comes to touch... How sensitive, well, first of all, you can have two different things. You can have fine touch. And fine touch, you're going to sense things such as the location of something on your body, um, the size of something, the shape, the texture. For the most part, fine touch is more discriminatory. It gives, me, it gives us more information. So it's going to give us more information, right? That's different than what we call crude touch, okay? Crude touch, what's going to happen is you're not gonna get all this information, right? And crude touch, it's more likely it's gonna be poorly localized. And we just don't get as much information. Yeah, if I put something on your back, you could sense what it feels like, but, or you know, the size of it maybe even the texture, but it's not gonna give you as much information as you would if you, had, um, fine, if you had fine touch. So now, how do we get fine touch and crude touch? Well, there's something called receptive fields. Okay, so in receptive fields, this is basically the area that your nerves can sense. So let's say that I have an area somewhere on my body and I am going to just have one nerve that goes to that area, right? And it's gonna have its dendrites coming out and sensing that area. Let's say this area, you have this one nerve that's sensing an area that's about seven centimeters wide, okay? That's about two and a half inches, all right? So now, we're not gonna get a whole lot of information from here. This could be more responsive for crude touch. And like I said, that could be just a general body area, like my back, maybe my shoulder, something like that. Now, let's look at areas we want fine touch, such as our fingertips, right? I may have, now, our, of course, our fingertips are not seven centimeters wide, but I'm going to do this just for the sake of showing the example. So let's say that I have this area here. This is my fingertip. Now, instead of having one nerve with its receptors and dendrites sensing an area this wide, imagine now I got a whole bunch of receptors that are in here. And instead of doing an area like that's seven centimeters wide, each one of these just does 
I don't know, maybe a millimeter. So as you can see here, we had one doing this big of an area. Here, imagine we have like 70 doing it. So you can see we can sense a lot more here. So the more receptors and the more nerves and the more dendrites I have in an area, the more I'm gonna be able to sense in here, okay? So I'm gonna get more of a fine touch in here than I would over here, all right? So now, let's go on and look at some of this, okay? The first type of um, receptor we're gonna look at is going to be free nerve endings, okay? Oh, before we get to that, when we talk about receptors, on receptors, it's, when I talk about receptors, it's gonna make it sound like each receptor has just one specific function, right? But it's not one, one receptor, one function. All right, this is stands for function. That's not the way it works, okay? I can have one receptor and it may feel different sensations. So it may be feeling touch, pressure, and temperature, let's just say, right? Just, just all at the same time. Now, let's say that somebody leans on me or, or I, somebody puts like a book in my arm or something, I, I don't know, but they put pressure in one area. Well, your body wants to know what's going on with that. So what they will do in this case is I may have many receptors that just feel one sensation, right? So let's just say in this case, it's pressure. Okay, so even though we're going to be talking about receptors, we're going to be talking about them in the sense as if it is one receptor, one function, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at these. And now my receptors can be one of two different types. I can have free nerve endings. Okay, I can have free nerve endings. And what I mean by these is these do not have a capsule. There's no capsule. So if I have nerve endings that have no capsule, it must mean I also have encapsulated receptors. So we're gonna start off talking about the free nerve endings first, okay? And there's several different categories of these. So when it comes to the free nerve endings, the first one we're going to talk about is called your thermoreceptors. And just like the name implies, thermoreceptors are going to feel temperature. The main function of free nerve endings is basically to feel pain and temperature. So they're going to feel temperature, okay? You have three to four times more cold receptors than warm. Okay? The other thing about this is these adapt quickly. And I'm going to talk more about these. I'm going to talk about free nerve endings more in a little bit. But these adapt quickly. Okay? So they're going to adapt quickly. That's why, like, if you've ever gone up, you're going to jump in a pool and you touch the water and you're like, oh my God, that's freezing, right? But you jump in the pool and within a few minutes, you don't even notice it's cold anymore, right? Because, you're, because your thermoreceptors have adapted quickly. Let's say you come out of the pool and then you wanna go in a jacuzzi, you touch and you're like, oh my God, that's warm, right? But you get in there and after a few minutes, you don't even realize how warm it is anymore because your thermoreceptors have adapted. The next one that we're going to talk about is, okay, so there's my thermoreceptors. And again, we're gonna talk about this some more in just a little bit, okay? So there's my thermoreceptors. The next one I'm gonna have is my nociceptors. Nociceptors feel pain, okay? There's really nothing that distinguishes the nerve endings of thermoreceptors and nociceptors, and we'll get more into that in just a minute. But pain can fall into two different categories. Okay, there's pain that needs attention like right now. If I cut myself with a knife, let's say I'm making a sandwich, I cut myself with a knife. Let's say that I am, uh, I touch something that's hot and I burn myself, right? Let's say 
that I go to the doctor and get an injection. So we'll say all of these, my body wants to know about right now. They need conscious attention right now. Let's say something bit me. They need conscious attention right now. These have to get to the brain fast. So fast pain is going to be due to things such as cuts. I'll put injections. Injections, bites, and I'm gonna put burns also on here, okay? So there's my, there's, there's what the nociceptors are gonna, are gonna sense. And again, we're, we're gonna talk more about these in just a minute, okay? So these are carried on myelinated fiber axons. Okay, and if you recall, we said myelinated axons have myelin on them and they have little openings called nodes of Ranvier that the impulse, we just say it skips over that to get to the brain faster. Things that gotta get to the brain fast travel on myelinated axons so they can get there faster. Now, these will also, let me see, the cuts, injection bites, they're carried on, on, on myelinated axons and these pains, pains need conscious attention right away. Okay, so that's going to be the nociceptors and my fast pain. So if I have fast pain, that must also mean I have slow pain. Right, so let's take a look at slow pain. Do I have enough room to write down that? Now I'm gonna erase it. So there's my fast pain, okay? It, it's cuts, injections, bites, burns. It has to get to the brain quickly. It has to get to the brain quickly, okay? Slow pain is something that we really don't need it to get to the brain that fast. Let's say I go to the gym, I've been working out, the next day I'm sore, okay? Really, I don't, my brain knows it's there. It's gonna tell me to take it easy, but it doesn't need to know, it doesn't need attention like right this second, right? So we're gonna have slow pain. Okay, that stands for pain. And the example I'm gonna use is just muscle soreness. Chronic pain could also fall under this too, all right, because of the fact that your brain knows it's there. It, it's not like you have to stop doing something right away, okay? These impulses or the, this sensation is carried on on myelinated fibers or axons. Okay, in other words, these are gonna be carried on on myelinated axons. They're gonna travel slower. So they take longer to get to the brain. Okay, so they're gonna take longer to get to the brain, right? So that's gonna be my slow impulses. Okay, so we've talked so far about two different types of free nerve endings. We talked about the thermal receptors. We talked about the nociceptors. The next type is going to be mechanoreceptors. And these are going to be more responsible for touch and pressure. So mechanoreceptors are next. And we have three different types of mechanoreceptors. Okay, we have baroreceptors. Okay, and for the most part, baroreceptors are gonna sense pressure and they're gonna be inside the body. So these sense pressure. Okay, if you've ever watched the news at night, you might hear them talk about the barometer and if the barometer has a, they're telling the amount of pressure and the more pressure there is, usually the warmer it's going to be. So this is going to sense pressure. Now, we find these in areas such as blood vessels, okay? What happens in the blood vessels is they want to know how much blood's going through. So let's say there's not a whole lot of blood going to an area, right? And so all of a sudden, what will happen is this won't be registering much pressure, so it'll actually tighten up your, your blood vessels, so therefore you'll increase the blood pressure. If there's a lot of blood going to an area, this, or let's say you start to run or something, you need more blood in the area, what these will do is they'll actually, the, this will sense pressure from the blood and they'll actually open up to help decrease that blood pressure a little bit. Okay, they're found like in the digestive tract, the bladder, okay, and areas such as that. I'm gonna do a video on baroreceptors um, later on. The second one that we have is going to be uh, proprioceptors. 
and proprioceptors, like we mentioned, this is going to help with our body's awareness in space, right? So we can keep balance of things such as this. This is the function of the proprioceptors, right? And it's gonna help with our balance. And then the last one is going to be tactile receptors. And I am gonna make another video on tactile receptors, but these are going to help with touch and pressure and pain and all the stuff that we've been talking about further up. So um, that's gonna be the tactile receptors that we have. So that's basically the receptors we have. And thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And thank you once again for watching.